In estimating the duration of the activities for my garden shed project, I assumed that all the durations were known with certainty. I calculated that the project would take 28 days. Given zero uncertainty, I could assume that there was a 100% chance of finishing on schedule. How realistic is that? From a practical standpoint, it is quite inconceivable that activity A will take exactly three days, etc. Instead, I guess I meant to say that most likely A will take three days. But I also need to contend with the worst case scenario that A could take up to six days. On the other hand, if all my stars are aligned, A could finish in as little as one day. So now I am talking about three time estimates for each activity. A most likely estimate, an optimistic estimate, and a pessimistic estimate. With three time estimates to choose from, what number should I use on my network diagram or Gantt chart to figure out the project schedule? To make sense of the time estimates, a useful assumption to make is that the estimates follow the beta distribution. The beta distribution is a family of distributions that can have different shapes, but time estimates usually follow beta distributions as shown, which are either symmetrical or skewed to one side. The two ends of the distribution are the optimistic estimate A and the pessimistic estimate B. The mode M is the most likely estimate. For scheduling my project, the appropriate time estimate to use is the mean of the beta distribution, which is called the expected time, T subscript E. When the distribution is symmetrical, the mean is equal to the mode M. When the distribution is skewed, I can calculate the mean as a weighted average of A, B, and M, with A and B weighted once, and M weighted four times. I can also calculate the variance of that estimate. I proceed to calculate the expected time durations for my project activities. I can now plug these TE values into my network diagram. Evaluating all the paths as before, I see that the critical path is still A, B, D, F, H, K, which takes 28 days. So my project duration is still 28 days. Although my project duration turned out to be 28 days as before, there is a big difference, however. The 28 day duration I have here is an estimate, unlike the 28 day duration that I assume to know with certainty. In the previous case, absent any uncertainty, my probability of finishing the project on time was 100%. Here, however, there is some uncertainty involved. So what would be the probability of finishing the project within 28 days? The time estimate for the project, 28 days, is made up of the individual estimates for the critical path activities A, B, D, F, H, and K. These individual estimates follow beta distributions. When you add them together to get the project estimate of 28 days, this number follows the normal distribution. So our project is estimated to take 28 days on average, but the actual duration can be plus or minus that number according to this normal distribution. So what is the probability of finishing the project within 28 days? About 50%. Think about what that means. Let us say your boss asks you to estimate the duration of a project. After performing your calculations, you report back that the estimated duration is 28 days, but there is a 50% chance of being on time 
and a 50% chance of being late. How useful is that information? Fortunately, along with the time estimate, we also have an idea as to the variability surrounding that estimate. The variance of this normal distribution can be calculated. The number 28 is made up of the individual time estimates of the critical path activities A, B, D, F, H, and K. So the variance surrounding the number 28 can be calculated as the sum of the variances of these individual time estimates. Adding up these variances, we have 0.69 plus 0.69 plus 0.69 plus 0.25 plus 0.69 plus 0.69, which comes to 3.722. Therefore, the standard deviation of this normal distribution is square root of 3.722, which is 1.93. Based on the properties of the normal distribution, we can estimate that there is a 68% probability that the project will be completed within plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. That is, there is a 68% probability that the project will take between 26.07 and 29.93 days. Likewise, there is a 95.5% probability that the project will be completed within plus or minus two standard deviations. To get a 95% probability interval, we look for plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations rather than plus or minus two standard deviations. So there is a 95% probability that the project will take between 24.22 and 31.78 days. Similarly, to get a 90% probability interval, we look for plus or minus 1.645 standard deviations from the mean. So there is a 90% probability that the project will take between 24.83 and 31.17 days. Armed with all these numbers, we can make much better decisions regarding the project. For example, suppose we have to promise our client a completion date that involves a late penalty. What date should we promise so that there is only a 2% chance of penalty? We can do that calculation in a similar manner using the mean and standard deviation. There is another important point to note regarding the uncertainty in time estimates. As the project manager, I have a hundred things on my mind. To prioritize, I put the critical activities at the center of my radar screen. So I'm going to watch activities A, B, D, F, H, K like a hawk to make sure they remain on track. The remaining activities are non-critical, so I give them less importance. Meanwhile, paths A, B, D, G, J, K and A, B, E, F, H, K both have expected durations of 26 days. These estimates also have variability associated with them. While I am watching my critical path closely and keeping it down to 28 days, suppose these other paths are on a course to exceed 28 days. These two paths now become the new critical paths. I am caught off guard and my project is off schedule. Therefore, while I do want to watch my critical path activities closely, I also want to watch the near critical paths. Of particular concern are the near critical paths with high variability that can overtake the critical path. I want to put those paths also at the center of my radar screen. <laughs>